100% being a teenager and doing sport and being so heavily involved in sport was the best thing that could have ever happened to me going through school. When I look back now and I look at the insecurities of girls that weren't active and I never had those worries. Hi, I'm Leah Williamson and this is My Body, My Story. Me and my body recently have been clashing. It's not working as quick as I need it to, but in yeah, in recent weeks, it's it's uh, it's on the up. The relationship's on the up. We're we're back friends again, and it's serving me with what I need it to to be able to do. So yeah, we're on good terms. Not being able to play is sometimes it's okay, but when you watch the games and I'm still involved and I still have to be integrated with the team, and it's literally like somebody just you know dangling a carrot right in front of your face 24-7. All my natural instincts are to play, are to be active, are to just run here or just run there, and when you're injured, you literally can't do anything um, to protect yourself. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It was always on the cards. I would have always got into sport because my family, everyone does something or, you know, um, even if it's for fun, but everybody's competed mostly um, in my immediate family but I actually was forced into sport. I was born walking and my toes pointed too far inwards, so the hospital said to try gymnastics and see if it helped correct my walking before we took like further steps and talking about braces and stuff like that. And yeah, so I went down, did gym four times a week from the age of two, basically, and, and corrected how I walked and then led me on to a lifetime of, of sport. I actually did a backflip yesterday in the gym, which my physio was like, trying to get me sacked. <laughs> I was like, no, sorry, I won't actually do that again. That was stupid. Stupid behavior. 100% being a teenager and doing sport and being so heavily involved in sport was the best thing that could have ever happened to me going through school. When I look back now and I look at the insecurities of girls that weren't active, and I never had those worries. I never had the worry of getting changed in the change room and not liking my body or because I knew I was strong and powerful, even if I, you know, somebody else might have not looked like the way that I looked. But to me, I was fit, I was healthy, and I looked a way that I was happy with because I knew what I was doing made me happy. So yeah, I think that was a major thing for me in school to come out unscathed, so so to speak, in terms of those sort of confidence and, and body issues that so so many of my friends had. I love my body. I've always loved my body. I've it like I say, it's it serves me. It serves me and I have goals that I want to tick tick off and I train it to be able to help me and it hasn't failed me yet. So I think, yeah, throughout school it was the same the same story. I I never put I never trained so that I looked good, but I trained, which meant I felt a certain way about myself, which allowed me to walk into any situation with my head held high. I think for us as a team, when we wrote that letter and when we decided that we wanted to, to make positive change for the next generation, it's because we have all experienced the benefits of it. We know how well sport has served us, and we obviously play a team sport, but a lot of us have done a lot of other things as well, you know, individual sport or even just fitness training at some point. And before you even get to the, the competitive side, it's the health benefits, the self-confidence. I don't know anybody in our team or anybody that I know that's ever worked out for fun or competitively that's ever regretted it afterwards. And we want to make sure that's accessible and provided as an opportunity to these, these younger people because it's slowly, slowly being put put backwards on the uh, priority list. You have a percentage of the country that does not provide sport at all for the kids at secondary school. You've then got a percentage that doesn't provide certain sports to girls. It's, you're making a choice for them before they've even had the chance to choose themselves. And I think that's the injustice because every person that I know at school that hated PE has grown up and now does yoga, Zumba, goes for a run, is doing half marathons, plays in a team at the weekend. So it seems to be something that we all return to, yet we're taking it away from, from the younger people when we think it's best to choose for them. By the time I got to the Euros final, I'd done so much work on myself that allowed me to, number one, recognise every emotion and every 
piece of anxiety and nervous energy that was coming up. I recognized it, I dealt with it, and I kind of banked it. Like, you're with me now, but you're not gonna kind of destroy me. That's how I chose to look at it. I chose to enjoy the moment for what it was. But when they kept, you know, those feelings, they come up and everyone's heard of butterflies and literally we still get that now, I'm sure, if you ask most of the girls, but mine comes very high and very fast when it does come over me. So that's why I have to feel it. I'm like, okay, you're there, I get it. And then deal with it afterwards and I have my, my plans in place to deal with that. But yeah, even to the point sometimes where you're, you know, you've got a dry, dry throat, you feel like that you've got something around your neck kind of thing. That's how extreme my performance anxiety used to be. Even after the quarterfinal, which is, Early on in the tournament, we you're so tired, you've played 120 minutes, but you get in the change room and you can dance with your teammates because it's such a good feeling. It's such a, you know, it's, it's the same as anything. When we go for a run and we're not feeling motivated, it feels a lot harder than when you're happy and you'd go and try and do something. So post-court final, post-semi-final, post-final, I could have been on my knees, but I would have got up to have a dance because, yeah, again, it's, an, it's a way of releasing everything that, that's been building up, building up, building up. And then you also feel like, I deserve this, so I'm gonna have a good time. My song, since I've been a child, like if I, if this comes on, my family look at me is share believe because it's just a, it's a two-step situation. Anyone can dance to it. There's no fancy routine. It's just move, move to the music. But post Euros, we had we had everything. We had a little bit of everything. We had garage. We had uh, we had we played a bit of scooter jumping all over the world, I think, at one point. But yeah, Atomic Kitten, slower ones, you know, we, we literally had had everything. So it was, um, I can't even remember the songs. I can just see people moving. That's all I remember from, from the change room. Post game, to relax or completely let what's just happened go, because I like to move on quickly. It's happened, I can't affect it anymore, so I want to move on. And I feel like I want to scream, so then I put my music on and I do it in the form of a song, which is why I quite like driving on my own to games so that I have that time on my own. At the minute, the, the Scream song is Forget Me, Lewis Capaldi. It's, it's just about within my vocal range, I think, but I wouldn't ask anybody else for their opinion. I think the nature of what I do is obviously quite, it's busy and the next thing's always coming after. You know, you play a game at the weekend, then you have another mini project it potentially even three days later, that's how it moves, let alone once you get into your actual life and the real world outside of football. So I think when my body lets me down, it tells me quick, you know, it, in an illness or mentally, you just feel, you feel drained. You don't have, instead of walking into a situation and coming out energized, I'm walking in, I'm coming away drained. Or there's so many little tells I think we ignore sometimes. We think we're just a little bit tired, but actually we've been tired for three days because our body's telling us we need to sleep. But the, the train just keeps on moving. So I think, again, I've had to learn to deal with that because it tells you, like most of the time when you, when you get into a bad way, your body's told you weeks before, you just didn't really listen. When it comes to the menstrual cycle, it's, my job is a, is a, is a sport, it's, it's all physical, it's all reliant on my body being able to do what it needs to do. So if you're heading into a game and you don't have a physical injury that everybody can see and you can diagnose and everybody knows what it is, you you feel like you've done your job, yet all of a sudden it's the same as if it was an illness. There's this chance that today might be the day that you come on your period. That changes everything, it changes the whole landscape of, you might be really lucky and today might be your lucky day, it's one that just comes and goes without you kind of even noticing, yet I've been in situations where I've woke up for a day of training, I know I have two sessions or you know I'm on the, the pitch, I'm in the gym, I have to do this, I have to tick this box, yeah, the first thing in the morning, I'm, I've got cramps, my back aches in a really bad way. You know, I'm tired, I'm, I'm clumsy, I've got a headache, all these things that might happen. And especially when you have endometriosis, it's 10 times worse. You know, I have to prepare for this. I have to take my tablets in advance or to be ready for the fact that this might get me, it might not, it might be a bad one. I might end up on the bathroom floor. You know, it's, I think the fact that we don't really consider that to be a, we wouldn't class that as an injury because it's not, it's, it's life, yet the effects it can have on you even just mentally and being switched on and concentrated is, can be so, so, so hard to balance alongside being a professional athlete. But I was quite lucky. I had 
a hamstring injury, I had a scan and they found a cyst on my ovary. So they investigated it, decided that it was too big to, to leave, so they took it out. Um, I, was, I was told I could leave it if I wanted to, but if it twists and it's unexpected, then you're in a world of, a world of trouble. Um, so I had it taken out before it became a problem and at the same time discovered that I had endometriosis. So the painful periods and make a lot of sense, but when somebody asks you that question as a woman, you just normally, you just thought, oh, it was a bad one this month, I'll just get on with it. I never thought to investigate any further. For somebody that has always worked and pushed my body to its limits um, and trained it for what it needs to be able to do, this was the first time that I'd come up against something that I didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to train. There is no way of training for it. For anybody that goes through what I had to go through uh, last year, I really, really appreciate the struggle because you start to think that, yeah, you should be doing more, but actually it's it's an inevitable thing that, you know, it doesn't make you any weaker than anybody else. The first feeling I got was just an overwhelming flood of tears, <laughs> an amount of tears. I just remember getting goosebumps. As soon as the, the final whistle was about to come, I knew that I was gonna cry, but I just went like goosebumps everywhere and my legs just kind of failed on me. So all of these things sound like really negative, but actually it was the best feeling in the whole entire world. I've never ever felt like that in my life. and I scares me that I probably know I never will again. I'm hoping and praying that I will experience that again and there are opportunities with the World Cup uh, to come. But yeah, I don't know, being at home, being the fairy tale it was, yeah, I wish I could have put that in a bottle and kept it forever. I think in terms of being and feeling as strong as I am and as strong as I want to be, being in an England shirt and you know standing alongside the girls obviously speaks for itself. That makes me feel like I have superpowers. but my family, that homely, the radio's on, we're sitting, we're chatting, we're playing cards, we're, you know, all watching the telly together or having a dance as a family. That to me is, is good for the soul. That's my, that's my soul food, yeah. If you have a goal in 2023, make sure that you're prepared for it and, and you're ready for what you want to do, but do not let it consume you to the point at which you don't enjoy it because there's no point doing anything unless you're going to look back on it with the best of memories if you wanted it that bad in the first place. I'm Leah Williamson. Thank you so much for watching this episode of My Body, My Story on Women's Health UK.